Yeah, take that! Man, these PlayStation 1 games are pretty awesome. Uh, I should do like a top 5 list on or something like that. Actually, there's probably too many awesome games. I'm gonna do the top 10 PlayStation 1 games. Number 10. At number 10, it's time for some Undead Mayhem with Medieval. You play the game as a skeleton of a man who people think was a hero, but who actually managed to die by getting shot in the eye. You're brought back to life to stop the evil wizard and fulfill your heroic destiny. Hooray! So, even from the shackles of death, my old enemy pursues me. You're the mechanics of the game were really good, and it was really fun to play. I mean, who would complain about being able to rip off your arm and use it as a weapon? Or putting on some dragon armor and being able to breathe fire. Yeah, it's awesome. The game had a creepy vibe with zombies, strange hands crawling around, and creepy farmers that like to say who are. It also had a good sense of humor, as well as some pretty fun bosses. The game even had a sequel, and a remake was made for the PSP too, but unfortunately, I never got the chance to play either one. Number 9 In at number 9, it's Driver, the original and still the best. This game showed hints of what Grand Theft Auto 3 would eventually one day become, and on the PlayStation 1 it was pretty incredible to explore. You play as an undercover cop driving around the streets of American cities, and the game was a lot of fun in general, with some varied missions, although the last couple are ridiculously hard. I mean, even the tutorial mission is pretty hard, not giving you much of a tutorial at all. What the hell does slalom mean in a car park? The best part of the game though was just driving around the cities, exploring and having some fun, and then using the game's built-in director mode to make some awesome car chase sequences. There was a sequel on the PlayStation, but unfortunately it was nowhere near as good looking or fun as this one. Number 8 Number 8 is Tomb Raider! This was the very first game I got with my PlayStation, so obviously, it gets a special place on the list. This game probably doesn't need much of an introduction, but you play as Lara Croft, the titular Tomb Raider, on an adventure through various caves and the like. You go around shooting lions and wolves and bears and solving the odd puzzle or two along the way. You also get to explore Lara's home, running around and doing Superman jumps in your... pyjamas? I don't know. Probably the most unexpected moment in the game is when you walk into a cave, find some velociraptors, okay, you kill them of course because you're a vicious killing machine, and then you run into a goddamn T-Rex. Then you run away, and then you die. Number 7 At number 7, it's an actual good game based on a movie, Toy Story 2. Somehow, Toy Story films always seem to produce great games. Toy Story 1 was awesome on the Mega Drive, and most recently, Toy Story 3 was pretty fun on the PS3. But the best by far was Toy Story 2. All the classic characters are here, from Buzz, Rex, Ham, and the rest, and it follows along with the story of the film pretty closely. I mean, you even get to fight Buzz's sworn enemy, Zerg. Buzz Lightning, your defeat will be my greatest triumph. This was one of those games that I spent a long time just playing the demo, where you only got the first level, and it was still great. I mean, I don't even know how far I ever got in the game, but it was awesome. The only thing missing is an option to play as Woody, but then, who wouldn't want to play as Buzz Lightyear? To infinity and beyond! Number 6 Next up is the most evil game on the list, Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver was a really dark and interesting game that I spent a long time playing. You play as a vampire who is cast into some kind of vortex for revolving too much. Yeah, makes sense. Is not yours. I am destroyed. One of the interesting things about the game was that it was one of the first to completely remove loading screens. Once you started playing the game, you never saw another loading screen again. Amazing! You run around the world sucking souls into your creepy face, impale creepy looking enemies onto spikes, suck up creepy ghosts and throw creepy vampires into the sunlight to explode. Even the main menu is creepy. It also had a cool mechanic where you could switch between the living and the dead worlds, which would completely change the environments. Unfortunately, I never got a chance to play the sequel, but this game is in desperate need of a modern day reboot, especially with this badass lightsaber dealie you get later in the game. Number 5 
At number five, it's GTA 2. How do I get them from here? Back before GTA games were super story driven 3D sandbox worlds, you had the 2D originals on PlayStation. These games always seem more about the mayhem you unleashed while exploring the world. Sure there was missions and story and a really cool mechanic where working for one gang made the others dislike you, but all of that fell by the wayside quickly. I remember completing this game the day I got it for Christmas, but still, I spent a long time afterwards just running around having fun. You zoomed around in fast cars, shot and ran over pedestrians and villains, and you got to use insane guns like this little electric number. Of course, there was always plenty of fun to be had in blowing stuff up until the cops came, and seeing just how long you could survive. Unlike in later GTAs though, you didn't lose the cops just by running away. Nope, the only way out was get busted or die trying. Number 4 At Number 4, it's Gran Turismo 2. The premier driving game on the PS1 was also my favourite. Featuring over 600 cars, which, you know, seemed absolutely crazy back then, the game ate up a lot of time. There were driving licences to earn, races to win, championships to win, and even rally races to enter. I remember a lot of talk at the time was about the beautiful replays, but I never really got why. They were just annoying to have to skip manually after every race. And if you just completed an endurance race that took like 3 or 4 hours, that was the last thing you wanted to do. Also, this was the game where I learned that a Nissan Skyline is probably the most awesome car in the world. I wasn't really the best at racing, but that was easy to solve because with so many cars you could always just have one better than everybody else. Sure, there wasn't exactly the best draw distance in the game, with buildings just popping up in front of you, but why would you care when at any time you can take your car for a spin in the car wash? Number 3 In third place, it's Crash Bandicoot 3. Warped! How can any list of the best PlayStation 1 games not include Crash Bandicoot? Crash 3 was always by far my favourite of the series. I'd probably put it up there as one of my favourite platformer games in general. In the game you're travelling through time to different times and different areas, from the middle ages to pirate seas to ancient China to underwater times? The variety of levels was really impressive, covering a broad range of types including the signature crash running towards the screen. You earned new abilities as you went, fought some fun bosses and occasionally died in hilarious ways with almost every enemy in the game seeming to provide a unique debt for Crash, which just added to the fun rather than making you feel frustrated. Of course, you also get to ride a kick-ass bike. It's kind of crazy to think that the people behind this game have now gone to make The Last of Us. Bit of a difference there. Number 2 Just barely missing out on the top spot, it's Final Fantasy VII. This game could be on this list for just the music alone, but luckily it's also got one of the best stories from the PS1 era. A world spanning adventure with some of the most iconic characters in gaming. I mean, who doesn't think Sephiroth is the ultimate badass? I'm not going to go into the story here, cause there's just too much to explain, but basically you're on an epic quest to save the world, featuring lots of crazy memory stuff and plenty of angst and emotions. I mean, who wasn't upset when Ares gets killed? Oh yeah, spoilers, I guess, come on game is 15 years old. Anyway, the battle system was really in-depth, enabling you to play the game whichever way you liked. There's loads of side quests and mini games, including snowboarding, chocobo breeding, and dressing up as a woman. The adventure to find out the truth behind Cloud's past is one of my favourite of all time. And like I said before, this game also has some of the best music in gaming. Number one. So here it is, my number one PlayStation 1 game of all time. It's Metal Gear Solid. Tactical espionage action. I don't know what it means, but it sure makes for a lot of fun. This game was groundbreaking on the PS1. It had one of the most interesting stories at the time with nuclear bombs, evil twin brothers and scientists that wet themselves. It was unlike anything else at the time with its stealth gameplay and such a cinematic style. It controlled really well and the top down view, along with your solid zone radar, gave you just enough to make things challenging without being frustrating. And when Snake's not going around giving heart attacks to old men or taking some sneaky peeks at Meryl's ass, you get to fight some of the best bosses on the PlayStation 1. 
there's always the crazy fight with Psychomantis where you have to switch your controller to the other port just to be able to hit him, or the game asking you to read the codec for Meryl from the back of the box. And of course, no Metal Gear game would be complete without some cardboard box sneaking fun. This was by far my most replayed game on the PlayStation, leading to a lifelong love for the Metal Gear Solid series, and a strange affinity for cardboard boxes. I'm hidden! So there it is, my top 5 PS1 games, but I want to know what yours are. Leave some comments below with what you think are the best, and don't forget to subscribe to me for more of these awesome videos. And why not check out some other videos while they're here too? They're on the screen now, so just click on them and have some fun.